Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jodi and on my channel I talk about Broadway and books. And in today's video, I will be talking about all the books I read in the month of August, or as I should probably say, my long overdue August reading wrap up, seeing as we are now in the middle of September. The reason for why you know, I'm a bit behind on this video is I just honestly take too long to think of what I want to say for my spoiler free book reviews on my channel for the books that I read throughout the month. So that's why I'm a bit behind on this video, but you know, that's okay. We're here today, so it's fine. Um, so now without any further ado, let's get on to today's video. So I read a total of three books throughout the month of August. And like I mentioned in past reading wrap ups, I don't have all the books here with me today because um, after I read a book and after I review the book on my channel, um, I donate the books. So um, I actually have one, uh, one book here with me today because I just made my spoiler free book review on it. But um, I actually have another one as well. And I'll explain why I have more than one still at the moment but yeah so i'll also in this video go over briefly what i read um you know what the book is about and my thoughts on it and my star rating um so here we go so the first book that i read in the month of august was a book called the seven year slip by ashley poston um the seven year slip is about clementine who inherits her aunt's apartment after she passes away and her aunt would tell her these stories about the apartment how it was magical and how time in it didn't exist like it did in the real world clementine loved hearing these stories of her aunts but she never believed them to be true and that is until one day when a man just appears in the apartment that she's never met or seen before and then she sees a calendar date seven years in the past and that's when she realizes all these stories her aunt would tell her were actually true about the apartment um as far as my thoughts on this book go at this moment in time the seven year slip is my favorite book of all time now i just love this book so much i love the story i love the characters i loved how the story took place in new york city um this was just a really wonderful sweet charming story about two people falling in love but also about people like finding their way in life and finding what or realizing what they really want to do out of their lives and it was just such a wonderful story I can totally see after reading this book why so many people like it and yeah like I said it's my favorite book of all time now so not surprising to hear my star rating which is five stars although this book is definitely more than five stars in my opinion but you know as far as the star, five star rating goes five stars is the highest number so that's why I rated it five stars but um also I after I finished reading seven year slip I you know, made the decision that if I consider a book to be a book that I would consider to be in the realm of my favorite books of all time, I would keep it instead of donating it. Because after I read the seven year, seven year slip, I just really couldn't part with it. I loved it too much. So I actually do have the book still, but I just forgot to bring it over here with me. So I'm too lazy to get it. So that's why I'm not talking with the book <laughs> right now. But um, yeah, so those are my thoughts on the seven year slip. So the second book I finished reading in the month of August was a book called The Last Flight by Julie Clark. The Last Flight is about two women who randomly randomly meet at an airport one day, Claire and Eva. They start to talk and they realize how they both don't want to go, go back home to their lives. So they agree to switch plane tickets and go on each other's flights as one another. So Claire goes to e Oakland, California and Eva goes to Puerto Rico. And when Claire lands down in Oakland, California, she sees so many people gathered by all the TV screens in the airport lobby. So she goes up to the TV screens to see what's going on. And that's when she learns that a plane has crashed and the plane that crashed was actually the plane that she was originally scheduled to fly on to go to Puerto Rico, the plane that Eva ended up going on instead of her. And the story goes on from there, but since this is spoiler free, leaving the overview at that. And as far as my thoughts on this book go, I really ended up quite liking this book a lot, but it did take me some time to get there, primarily because I found the first 100 pages to go at just a really slow pace, making it difficult to get into the story. Um, but, you know, I really did end up liking this book a lot. I thought it was a really you know, the parts of the book I liked. <laughs> it was a really well done and well told suspense thriller. Um, I thought the writing in the book was very sharp and smart. I thought the twist turns reveals as well as the ending were all really well done. And I didn't find them predictable at all. I'm not sure if everyone would feel that way, but I thought they were really well done. And before I get to my star rating, I just want to say like me finishing this book is just shows why you don't have to DNF a book you don't like everything about when you first start reading it. Um, I myself don't dnf books because you know i buy all the books that i have so you know i spent money to buy these books i'm going to my camera went out of focus i apologize <laughs> but yeah i spent money on these books so i'm going to finish reading them whether i love them or not but um that's just me but it just goes to show you that 
you know, you don't have to DNF a book if you don't love everything about it because the more and more you read of it, you could actually like it. And I, myself, you know, didn't like this book at the start of it. And then I really ended up liking it a lot. So <laughs> those are just, you know, my thoughts on not having to DNF a book just because you don't like it. I don't know. That's just me probably though. Um, but yeah, I ended up reading this um, book 4.75 stars. And the last book I read in the month of August is a book I actually have with me today because I just made my spoiler free book review on it. So after I do this, I will be donating the book so someone else can have a chance to read it. And um, that book will be The X-Talk by Rachel and Solomon. The X-Talk is about Shay Goldstein who works in public radio. And one day at the office, there's a meeting called for all the higher ups who work there. She's a producer at the radio station. So, you know, that's why she's invited to attend. And, you know, she sees everybody at the meeting that she would hope and expect to see. But then she sees a new reporter who just joined the station, Dominic Young. He's at this meeting and she doesn't understand why because he just started working there. It makes no sense to her. But anyway, the meeting gets started and the station's program director can't ask everyone there if they have any ideas for any new shows that the station could put on the air. And that's when Shay suggests an idea for a show, a relationship and dating show that could be co-hosted by two exes, you know, that used to date that no longer do. Everyone loves this idea, of course, except Dominic. And then as time goes on, Shay and Dominic get called into another meeting by Kent, where he lets them know that they're going to put Shay's show on the air and he'd like the two of them to co-host it. Initially, the two of them say no, but then after some time, they agree to co-host the show. And the more time they get to know one another and spend around one another, the more they actually start to like one another. And that's basically what the X-Talk is about. My, as far as my thoughts on the book go, I really like this book. It was just such a good romantic comedy. It was so much fun to read. I just loved reading how Dominic and Shay's relationship evolved from enemies to lovers. And, you know, this book also deals with other aspects of life. Um, besides two people falling in love, it deals with grief and loss, feeling alone in the world, having a hard time making new friendships, and how you thought you knew where your life was going to go, the direction it was going to go in, and then, you know, things turn and you find yourself having to start over again when you least expected it. And I just really love the way that the story was written and told. And it was just, it was just a lot of fun to read. And just to let you know, in case this is something you'd like to know before you read romance novels, because I myself wasn't aware of this before reading this, but there is a lot of spice in this book. So I just thought, you know, I let you know about that in case that's something you like to know about before reading a romance novel. But yeah, I rated this book five stars. Like I said, I really like this book a lot. So those are all the books that I read in the month of August. If you're looking for more in-depth videos on my thoughts on each one of these books, like what the book's about, my thoughts on it, general information on the book, and my star rating, um, not in that order. I usually, I usually do what the book's about, general information, my thoughts, my star rating. That's what I should have said. But um, yeah, if you're looking for more videos on what these books are about in a more in-depth way, um, I have made spoiler free book reviews on each of these books that I talked about today on my channel already. You can find those videos in my playlist, Books I Read in 2024 playlist. So yeah, um, I had a really great reading month. What can I say? I'm very happy with what I read and I hope you had a great reading month as well. Also, and I hope I helped you today discover a new book, you know, that you might not have been aware of. And yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so very much for watching and until next time, bye.